In this video, I'll give you my best tips on how to photograph flowers. And after seeing this video, you'll likely have some new flower photography ideas, get a better grip on what angles to choose and what techniques to consider before pressing the shutter. By the way, my name is Peter Bernaldam and I'm a nature photographer. If you like this video, please remember to like it and subscribe using the buttons below. Now let's get on with the eight best tips for flower photography. And the first one is choosing the right lens for flower photography. You need to start exploring your lens's capabilities. Each flower shape, structure and color requires an individual approach. So if you want to get really close, then something like a 90 mm or 105 mm macro lens is ideal for flower photography. But to show the beauty of a whole range of plants, you need to use different lenses. For close-up images, where you perhaps only capture the stamen or part of a flower, it's better to use a macro lens. But if you want to capture the beauty of flowers from a distance, it's likely a better choice to use a lens with a focal length of 50 to 200 millimeters. If your lens allows you to choose a large aperture like f2 or f2.8 easily make the flower stand out and get a nice smooth background so to get the best results you'll likely shoot either wide open or at an aperture of up to 5.6 live view is your best friend when photographing flowers live view allows you to frame the shot better and decide where to position critical elements Live view works best with a tripod or if you have a flip out screen. Otherwise, it can be a little difficult to handhold your camera and use live view at the same time. You lose a bit of stability. But since flowers are not moving a lot, then you can, in most situations, easily use a tripod and take a little more time to get a perfect composition and then take the shot, evaluate it and try again if necessary. Next up, you shouldn't forget about lighting. Usually you shoot flowers outside where perfect daylight does the entire job for you. You often don't need any specific lighting equipment. However, natural lighting conditions can be unpredictable and you might need to use a flash, a reflector or a diffuser. You can really capture the beauty of flowers by using backlighting or side lighting. If you have the flower between you and the sun, then you can let the light from the sun illuminate the leaves or the petals from the back. It creates a stunning glowing effect for flower photography. If you got a few dewdrops in the frame, then coupled with backlighting, then you can get a really nice bouquet effect. The best time for capturing beautiful light in flower photography is usually the golden hour, where you can capture the flowers with a beautiful golden light on coming from one side. However, the important thing here, no matter at what time of day you're shooting flower photography is to actively think about light and how you can improve light to improve your photo. Next up, it's best to avoid shooting flower photography on windy days. One of the biggest challenges in photographing flowers is the wind. It moves the subject all the time and it gives you blurry images. You can try to see if using a faster shutter speed of for example 1000 of a second or higher can give you a good shot. Alternatively, you can also try to hinder the wind from reaching your subject. You can use your body to block the wind a bit or use an object, pull something between the, the wind and the subject. Now, what I often do is that I hold the stem of the flower with one hand just to make it move less in the wind. Just make sure that your hand doesn't enter the frame or you can crop it out later when editing your photos. Colors is an essential feature of flowers and it should have a special place in your composition. You can enhance a color by choosing a complementary color as a background. This could be a red flower on a green background or a yellow flower on a blue background. Although you can't change the color of the natural background, you can change the position of the camera. Photographing a flower from below makes the sky the background. If you take a shot of a flower from above, the ground becomes the background. 
photographing it from the side makes the surrounding grass the background. So you have a lot of choices in this area. Some flower photographers, however, are not satisfied with relying on using a natural background. Instead, they carry their own set of uh, gradient background cards so they can choose the background they prefer, just like if they were in the studio. Water drops work perfect with flower photography. Water drops can add a nice touch to your flower photos. Of course, the easiest way is to go out just after a rain shower or at dawn when there is still some dew on the plants and the flowers. However, it's not difficult to create a water drop effect. It's enough just to use a spray bottle. Another thing to consider is working with symmetries and repetitions. Flowers are masters of symmetry and repetition. At the same time, their geometry is imperfect and unique. Not two flowers are completely identical. But if you merge in patterns and textures and fill the frame with lines and shapes, you can get some very interesting compositions. Make sure your composition is well balanced and harmonious. Strong lines capture the viewer's attention whether you plant it or not. So don't leave anything at random. The direction, hardness and color of the lines influence the composition more than you imagine. One thing that I find very useful in flower photography is using the rule of odds. The rule of odds say that photos with an odd number of similar elements are more engaging than those with an even number. In other words, a photo with three or five elements will be a little bit catchier than one with two or four elements. Therefore, if you include more flowers in your compositions or several petals or several leaves, you can think about using an odd number. But don't stress too much about this. Using only one element may seem the best option for flower microphotography. It's an odd number, it's catchy, and it tells the viewer exactly where to look and what the image is about. However, from time to time, using more elements enhances the visual story. It leads the viewer from one element to another, making them spend a little more time with your photo and can sometimes deliver a stronger and more dynamic image. If you like this video, please remember to like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in the next video.